Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I'm here with my uh, full leather uh, triple collection of Mormon scriptures uh, for another episode of Mormon Claims. Uh, in this video I'm carrying on my exploration of the Joseph Smith psychedelics connection, exploring in particular Joseph Smith's first vision. So when we're talking about psychedelics, we're talking about hallucinogens, or given that we're exploring these substances in the context of religion or spirituality, the proper term is ethnogens, substances taken for the express purpose of altering one's perception, mood, consciousness or cognition in order to engender spiritual experiences and in turn promote spiritual development. There's a number of ethnogenic drugs that the Smith family could have accessed near their home, but primarily we're talking about psilocybin mushrooms. Joseph Smith's first vision seems to follow very closely, and I'll explain why, the pattern of a psilocybin trip. So at the age of 14 or 15, depending on the account, Smith in the early spring, exactly when psilocybin mushrooms would have been sprouting up, entered the wood and sought out the grove near his home. His intention was to discover wisdom. Smith's quest for wisdom was almost certainly modelled upon his own father's quest for wisdom, a quest which similarly resulted in visions for his father, Joseph Smith Sr. Visions which were far more explicitly provoked through his taking of ethnogenic substances. So beginning with his father's vision then. His father found himself alone in a field, but accompanied by an attendant spirit, which instructed him to eat a certain edible material which was found on a fallen tree. If you're unaware, a dead tree is one of the most likely places that you'll find psilocybin mushrooms growing. And he's told that if he eats this material, it'll make him wise. Shortly after taking this content, Joseph Smith Sr. reports being threatened by all manner of beasts bellowing most terrifically. After which, when he returns to his natural senses, he reports being perfectly happy. Now, this sounds a lot like a bad trip. The psilocybin unleashed within him some dark content deep within his subconscious, but having gone through this bad trip, this bad experience, he is once again contented when he comes out the other side. And what was the knowledge or wisdom that Joseph Smith Sr. received? Well, according to his wife, following his vision, he seemed more contented than ever in the opinion that there was no Christian denomination that knew more concerning the kingdom of God than what any other person could know outside such denominations. Okay, so returning to Joseph Smith. He's entering his grove in order to undertake the same kind of spiritual journey that his father had modelled, in order to acquire wisdom. And no doubt he followed the advice his father's attendant spirit had given him. If you want wisdom, eat the edible material. And so, as the account goes, he's kneeling under a canopy of oaks, birch and hemlock, petitioning God for forgiveness, when, much like his father, he is seized upon by some menacing power. There's a thick darkness around him. In other words, he is also experiencing himself a bad trip. He's entering this strange, altered mental state. And at the lowest point, when he's ready to sink into despair and abandon himself to destruction, beings from an unknown world appear to him. In the midst of that light, I saw two personages who spoke unto me. He perceives his encounter to be with actual physical beings. The psilocybin mushrooms caused this mind-opening, cosmological, uh, transformative experience for the young Joseph Smith. This experience began for him his own process of spiritual development, his own process towards becoming the prophet shaman um, that he would ultimately become, uh, in which he would lead others into such experiences 
also. In closing then, it's interesting to note how much this ethnogenic reading of uh, Joseph Smith's first vision accords with what he would later write in section 89 of Doctrine and Covenants. This is the section um, that the LDS Church reads as prohibiting the consumption of alcohol, tobacco, coffee and tea. Uh, but it also addresses the use of healing plant medicine. Um, so here is Doctrine and Covenants 89 um, verse 10 and 11. And again, verily I say unto you, all wholesome herbs God hath ordained for the constitution, nature, and use of man. Every herb in the season thereof, and every fruit in the season thereof, all these to be used with prudence and thanksgiving. And what will the reward be for following this advice? Well, we get that in verse 19. And I shall find wisdom and great treasures of knowledge, even hidden treasures. Wholesome herbs and hidden treasures. Thanks for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe. And uh, do check out my previous video uh, on ethnogenics if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next one.